Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today we have this card right here. This right here is a Nvidia GeForce GTX 260. This card was released back in June of 2008 for about $300. It's based on the Tesla 2.0 architecture and it has a clock speed of 650MHz. My model is 896MB of GDDR VRAM which comes clocked in at 1150MHz. It has 192 shading units, 64 TMUs and 28 ROPs. Let's find out what this 14 year old card can still do in 2022. First off it was time to unbox the card. The card was packaged well so shipping wouldn't have done any damage. The only thing that I can think of that might have hurt the card would have been that it wasn't wrapped in an anti-static bag, but it should have survived the trip anyway. Now let's take the card apart and clean it. The card was a bit dusty inside and I also wanted to replace the thermal paste. Here's a before and after of all the parts. Now with the card all cleaned up and fresh thermal paste applied, let's put it back together again. Let's have a look at the card itself. For power, this card requires two 6 pin power cables. For video out, there's one S video port and two DVI ports. This card has one big fan that cools it. This is how the fan sounds in idle. under load and at full speed. Now it's time to put this card into my PC. While I was gone I had quite an upgrade to my PC. The testing system now features an Intel Core i5 11400, 32GB of DDR4 RAM and an Aorus B560M Elite motherboard. Time to turn on my PC with this card installed. Now with the PC turned on, let's install some drivers. This took a while and during testing I switched to Windows 10 since I did not feel like Windows 11 really liked these drivers. Now it's time for some benchmarks. First off, user benchmark. User benchmarks showed that the CPU was performing above expectations, the RAM was performing as expected, but it didn't show if the GPU was performing as expected. Next up, Heaven. Heaven would not run due to direct 3D limitations. On to performance test. In performance test the card got a score of 39 in the 2D mark and a score of 976 in the 3D mark. Now let's test some games. All games were tested on Windows 10 as on Windows 11 a lot of the games crashed. Minecraft ran perfectly on high settings with a render distance of 12 chunks. The card managed to get an average FPS of 61, with 1% lows of 51 FPS and 0.1% lows of 46 FPS. Next up, Roblox. On high settings the card managed to get an average FPS of 58, with 1% lows of 18 FPS and 0.1% lows of 2 FPS. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator was a game that also ran absolutely fine. The card managed to reach 60 FPS even at the graphic intense parts. Ultimate Custom Night also ran absolutely fine, averaging about 40 FPS. This experience was also perfectly playable. Euro Truck Simulator 2 had to run on the lowest settings in a resolution of 1366 by 768 but at those settings, this game was pretty playable. The card managed to get an average FPS of 44, with 1% lows of 25 FPS and 0.1% lows of 12 FPS. Bus Simulator 12 at the lowest settings in a resolution of 1366 by 768 was also surprisingly playable. 
The card managed to achieve an average FPS of 39, with 1% loss of 18 FPS and 0.1% loss of 4 FPS in this game. Train station renovation would not start, leaving me at this blank screen with only a cursor before freezing. BMNG drive would not start due to DirectX limitations. CSGO ran fine at medium to high settings. The card managed to get a max FPS of 413 in the benchmark and a minimum of 4, while the FPS was usually over around 40 FPS in game. Bus Simulator 16 had some weird graphical issues, leaving me with this very weird gameplay. PC Building Simulator would run at the lowest settings in the 1024x768 resolution. At these settings, the card managed to get around 30 FPS average. I forgot to run the benchmark tool, so that's why I don't have detailed average, 1% lows, and 0.1% lows numbers. Surprisingly, Fortnite also launched. At the lowest settings with a 3D resolution of 30%, the card managed to get an average FPS of 30, with 1% lows of 11 FPS and 0.1% lows of 6 FPS. GTA 5 was surprisingly playable on this card. At the lowest settings in a resolution of 1024x768, the card managed to get an average FPS of 74, with 1% loss of 27 FPS and 0.1% loss of 15 FPS. Now I tried overclocking the card to squeeze some more performance out of it. An extra 144 MHz on the core clock and nothing on the memory clock was the max it could take before becoming unstable. Testing Minecraft again, the FPS went up to an average of 75, with 1% loss of 56 FPS and 0.1% loss of 48 FPS, which made the game a bit more playable. Going back to Roblox, the FPS went up to an average of 60, with 1% loss of 38 FPS and 0.1% loss of 2 FPS. Especially the 1% loss went up by quite a bit after the overclock. In Euro Truck Simulator 2, the FPS stayed almost the same. An average FPS of 41, with 1% loss of 29 FPS and 0.1% loss of 11 FPS. I can't compare the FPS in PC Building Simulator, but an average FPS of 36 with 1% loss of 5 FPS and 0.1% loss of 1 FPS feels better than how this game ran before the overclock. In GTA 5, the FPS stayed about the same. Still an average of 74 FPS with a 1 FPS improvement in both the 1% and 0.1% lows. The overclock did not have much effect in this game it looks like. Then it was time to uninstall the drivers and shut down my PC. Now, what do I think of this card? In my opinion, this card is still usable in 2022, but it's definitely feeling like it's running on its last legs. Some games already don't run on it and the drivers are very unstable in Windows 11 and 10. I had to reboot my PC two times for some games to work just because of weird driver issues and purely for the fact that these cards are so old and have driver issues, I would not recommend picking one up to play games on. If you're still using one, I would recommend upgrading but it's not really all too bad for a 14 year old GPU. And with that, this video comes to an end. Thanks so much for watching, comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!